Cogito, ergo sum is a Latin philosophical proposition by René Descartes usually translated into English as, I think, therefore I am. The phrase originally appeared in French as je pense, donc je suis in his discourse on the method, so as to reach a wider audience than Latin would have allowed. It appeared in Latin in his later Principles of Philosophy. As Descartes explained, we cannot doubt of our existence while we doubt. A fuller version, articulated by Antoine Leonard Thomas, aptly captures Descartes' intent, dubito, ergo cogito, ergo sum. I doubt, therefore I think, therefore I am. The concept is also sometimes known as the cogito. This proposition became a fundamental element of Western philosophy, as it purported to form a secure foundation for knowledge in the face of radical doubt. While other knowledge could be a figment of imagination, deception, or mistake, Descartes asserted that the very act of doubting one's own existence served at minimum as proof of the reality of one's own mind. There must be a thinking entity in this case, the self for there to be a thought. In Descartes' writings Descartes first wrote the phrase in French in his 1637 Discourse on the Method. He referred to it in Latin without explicitly stating the familiar form of the phrase in his 1641 Meditations on First Philosophy. The earliest written record of the phrase in Latin is in his 1644 Principles of Philosophy, where, in a margin note see below, he provides a clear explanation of his intent. W. E. cannot doubt of our existence while we doubt. Fuller forms of the phrase are attributable to other authors. Topic. Discourse on the method The phrase first appeared in French in Descartes' 1637 Discourse on the Method in the first paragraph of its fourth part. French smiley face, and si, a cause que nos sens nous trompant quelquefoy, je voulais supposer qu'il n'y avoit aucune chose qui fut telle qu'ils nous la font imaginer, et parce qu'il y a des hommes qui se meprenant en raisonnant, meme touchant les plus simples matéries de géométrie, et y font des paralogisms, jugent que je trois sujet à failure autant quoiqu'en autre, je rejeti comme faces tout les raisons que je vois prises auparavant pour demonstrations, et enfin. Considerant que tout les memes pensées que nous avons attant évolés nous puvent aussi venir quand nous dormons, sans qu'il y en ait aucune pour lors qui soit vrai, je me résolus de finder que tout les choses qui me toyant jages entrées en l'esprit netoyant non plus vrais que les allusions de mes songas. Mais aussitôt après je prie garde que, pendant que je voulois ainsi penser que tout et toi faux, il fallait nécessairement que moi qui le pensois fusse quelque chose, et remarquant que cette vérité, je pense, donc je sois, et toi si firme et si assuré, que tout les plus extravagantes suppositions des septiques nettoyant pas capables de le brandler, je jugge que je pouvoir le recevoir sans scrupule pour le premier principe de la philosophie que je cherche. English smiley face, accordingly, seeing that our senses sometimes deceive us, I was willing to suppose that there existed nothing really such as they presented to us, and because some men err in reasoning, and fall into paralogisms, even on the simplest matters of geometry, I, convinced that I was as open to error as any other, rejected as false all the reasonings I had hitherto taken for demonstrations, and finally, when I considered that the very same thoughts presentations which we experience when awake may also be experienced when we are asleep, while there is at that time time not one of them true, I supposed that all the objects presentations that had ever entered into my mind when awake, had in them no more truth than the illusions of my dreams. But immediately upon this I observed that, whilst I thus wished to think that all was false, it was absolutely necessary that I, who thus thought, should be something, and as I observed that this truth, I think, therefore I am, was so certain and of such evidence that no ground of doubt, however extravagant, could be alleged by the skeptics capable of shaking it, I concluded that I might, without scruple, accept it as the first principle of the philosophy of which I was in search. Topic meditations on First Philosophy In 1641, Descartes published in Latin Meditations on First Philosophy in which he referred to the proposition, though not explicitly as cogito, ergo sum in Meditation 2, Latin smiley face, hoc pronunciatum, ego sum, ego existo, quotias a me prefertor, vel mente concipitor, necessario esse verum, English smiley face, this proposition, I am thinking, therefore I am, exist, whenever it is uttered from me, or conceived by the mind, necessarily is true. 
Topic Principles of Philosophy In 1644, Descartes published in Latin his Principles of Philosophy where the phrase ego cogito, ergo sum appears in Part 1, Article 7, Latin smiley face, sic autum regisientes illa omnia, de quibus aliquo modo possumus dubiter, ac etiam, falsa esse fingens, facile quidem, supinimus nullum esse diem, nullum colum, nulla corpora, nosc etiam ipsos, non haber manus, nec pedes, nec denique ullum corpus, Non autum idio nos qui talia cogitamus nihil esse, ripugnat enum ut putamus id quad cogitat eo ipso tempore quo cogitat non existere. Ac pro and haec cognitio, ego cogito, ergo sum, est omnium prima and certissima, quae quilibet ordin philosophantia curat, English smiley face, while we thus reject all of which we can entertain the smallest doubt, and even imagine that it is false, we easily indeed suppose that there is neither God, nor sky, nor bodies, and that we ourselves even have neither hands nor feet, nor, finally, a body, but we cannot in the same way suppose that we are not while we doubt of the truth of these things, for there is a repugnance in conceiving that what thinks does not exist at the very time when it thinks. Accordingly, the knowledge, I think, therefore I am, is the first and most certain that occurs to one who philosophizes orderly. Descartes' margin note for the above paragraph is, Latin smiley face, non posse a nobis dubitari, quin existamus dum dubitamus, at qui hoc esse primum, quad ordin philosophando cognitimus, English smiley face, that we cannot doubt of our existence while we doubt, and that this is the first knowledge we acquire when we philosophize in order. Topic the search for truth Descartes, in a lesser known posthumously published work dated as written ca. 1647 entitled La Recherche de la Vérité par la Lumière Naturelle The Search for Truth by Natural Light, wrote Latin smiley face, s entio, o porter, ut quid dubitatio, quid cogitatio, quid existentia sit anti shamus, quam de veritate hujus ratiocini, dubito, ergo sum, vel, quad item est, cogito, ergo sum, plain simus persuasa. English smiley face, I feel that it is necessary to know what doubt is, and what thought is, what existence is, before we can be fully persuaded of this reasoning. I doubt, therefore I am. Or what is the same. I think, therefore I am. Other forms The proposition is sometimes given as dubito, ergo cogito, ergo sum. This fuller form was penned by the eloquent French literary critic, Antoine Leonard Thomas, in an award-winning 1765 essay in praise of Descartes, where it appeared as, Puisque je doute, je pense, puisque je pense, j'exista. In English, this is, Since I doubt, I think, since I think, I exist. With rearrangement and compaction, I doubt, therefore I think, therefore I am. Or in Latin, Dubito, ergo cogito, ergo sum. A further expansion, dubito, ergo cogito, ergo sum, res cogitanes. A thinking thing extends the cogito with Descartes' statement in the subsequent meditation. Ego sum res cogitanes, id est dubitans, affirmans, negans, paca intelligens, multa ignorans, volans, nolans, imaginans etiam et sentiens. Or, in English. I am a thinking conscious thing, that is, a being who doubts, affirms, denies, knows a few objects, and is ignorant of many." This has been referred to as, "...the expanded cogito". Translation Neither je pense nor cogito indicate whether the verb form corresponds to the English simple present or progressive aspect. Translation needs a larger context to determine aspect. Following John Lyons, 1982, Vladimir Zegarek notes, The temptation to use the simple present is said to arise from the lack of progressive forms in Latin and French, and from a misinterpretation of the meaning of cogito as habitual or generic. Cf. Gnomic aspect, Anne Banfield writes, also following Lyons. In order for the statement on which Descartes' argument depends to represent certain knowledge, its tense must be a true present in English, a progressive, not as I think but as I am thinking, in conformity with the general translation of the Latin or French present tense in such non generic, non stative contexts. Or in the words of Simon Blackburn, Descartes' premise is not I think in the sense of I ski, which can be true even if you are not at the moment skiing. It is supposed to be parallel to I am skiing. Fumitaka Suzuki, 
2012 writes Taking consideration of Cartesian theory of continuous creation, which theory was developed especially in the meditations and in the principles, we would assure that I am thinking, therefore I am, exist is the most appropriate English translation of ego cogito, ergo sum. The similar I am thinking, therefore I exist appears in the CSMK translation of Descartes' correspondence in French je pense, donc je suis, to colleagues at CSMK 3 247. The earliest known translation is I am thinking, therefore I am, is from 1872 by Charles Porterfield Croth. Topic. Interpretation As put compactly by Professor Croth 1872, that cannot doubt which does not think, and that cannot think which does not exist. I doubt, I think, I exist. The phrase cogito, ergo sum is not used in Descartes' meditations on first philosophy but the term, the cogito, is used to refer to an argument from it. In the meditations, Descartes phrases the conclusion of the argument as, that the proposition, I am, I exist, is necessarily true whenever it is put forward by me or conceived in my mind. Meditation 2 at the beginning of the second meditation, having reached what he considers to be the ultimate level of doubt, his argument from the existence of a deceiving God, Descartes examines his beliefs to see if any have survived the doubt. In his belief in his own existence, he finds that it is impossible to doubt that he exists. Even if there were a deceiving God, or an evil demon, one's belief in their own existence would be secure, for there is no way one could be deceived unless one existed in order to be deceived. But I have convinced myself that there is absolutely nothing in the world, no sky, no earth, no minds, no bodies. Does it now follow that I, too, do not exist? No. If I convinced myself of something, or thought anything at all, then I certainly existed. But there is a deceiver of supreme power and cunning who deliberately and constantly deceives me. In that case, I, too, undoubtedly exist, if he deceives me, and let him deceive me as much as he can, he will never bring it about that I am nothing, so long as I think that I am something. So, after considering everything very thoroughly, I must finally conclude that the proposition, I am, I exist, is necessarily true whenever it is put forward by me or conceived in my mind. At 725, CSM 2 16-17. There are three important notes to keep in mind here. First, he claims only the certainty of his own existence from the first-person point of view. He has not proved the existence of other minds at this point. This is something that has to be thought through by each of us for ourselves, as we follow the course of the meditations. Second, he does not say that his existence is necessary, he says that if he thinks, then necessarily he exists, see the instantiation principle. Third, this proposition, I am, I exist, is held true not based on a deduction, as mentioned above, or on empirical induction but on the clarity and self-evidence of the proposition. Descartes does not use this first certainty, the cogito, as a foundation upon which to build further knowledge, rather, it is the firm ground upon which he can stand as he works to discover further truths as he puts it. Archimedes used to demand just one firm and immovable point in order to shift the entire earth, so I too can hope for great things if I manage to find just one thing, however slight, that is certain and unshakable. At 724, CSM 216. According to many Descartes specialists, including Étienne Gilson, the goal of Descartes in establishing this first truth is to demonstrate the capacity of his criterion—the immediate clarity and distinctiveness of self-evident propositions—to establish true and justified propositions despite having adopted a method of generalized doubt. As a consequence of this demonstration, Descartes considers science and mathematics to be justified to the extent that their proposals are established on a similarly immediate clarity, distinctiveness, and self-evidence that presents itself to the mind. The originality of Descartes' thinking, therefore, is not so much in expressing the cogito, a feat accomplished by other predecessors, as we shall see, but on using the cogito as demonstrating the most fundamental epistemological principle, that science and mathematics are justified by relying on clarity, distinctiveness, and self-evidence. Baruch Spinoza in Principia Philosophiae Cartesianae, at its prolegomenon identified cogito ergo sum, the ego sum cogitanes, I am a thinking being, as the thinking substance with his ontological interpretation. It can also be considered that cogito ergo sum is needed before any living being can go further in life. 
Topic: <inaudible> Predecessors. Although the idea expressed in Cogito, ergo sum is widely attributed to Descartes, he was not the first to mention it. Plato spoke about the knowledge of knowledge. Greek noesis noesios noesis noesios and Aristotle explains the idea in full length. But if life itself is good and pleasant, and if one who sees is conscious that he sees, one who hears that he hears, one who walks that he walks and similarly for all the other human activities there is a faculty that is conscious of their exercise, so that whenever we perceive, we are conscious that we perceive, and whenever we think, we are conscious that we think, and to be conscious that we are perceiving or thinking is to be conscious that we exist. Nicomachean Ethics, 1170a25 ff. Augustine of Hippo in De Civitate Dei writes c. Fowler, sum. If I am mistaken, I am. Book 11, 26, and also anticipates modern refutations of the concept. Furthermore, in the Enchiridion Augustine attempts to refute skepticism by stating, b. Why not positively affirming that they are alive? The skeptics ward off the appearance of error in themselves, yet they do make errors simply by showing themselves alive. One cannot err who is not alive. That we live is therefore not only true, but it is altogether certain as well. Chapter 7, Section 20. In 1640 correspondence, Descartes thanked two colleagues for drawing his attention to Augustine and notes similarity and difference. See CSMK 3 159, 161. Another predecessor was Avicenna's floating man thought experiment on human self-awareness and self-consciousness. The 8th century Hindu philosopher Adi Shankara wrote in a similar fashion, No one thinks, I am not, arguing that one's existence cannot be doubted, as there must be someone there to doubt. The central idea of Cogito, ergo sum is also the topic of Mandukya Upanishad. Spanish philosopher Gómez Pereira in his 1554 work De Immortalitate Anime, published in 1749, wrote Nosco mi aliquid nocere, and quid quid nocit, est, ergo ego sum I know that I know something, anyone who knows exists, then I exist. Topic critique Topic Use of I. In Descartes, the project of pure enquiry, Bernard Williams provides a history and full evaluation of this issue. Apparently, the first scholar who raised the I problem was Pierre Gassendi. He points out that recognition that one has a set of thoughts does not imply that one is a particular thinker or another. Were we to move from the observation that there is thinking occurring to the attribution of this thinking to a particular agent, we would simply assume what we set out to prove, namely, that there exists a particular person endowed with the capacity for thought. In other words, the only claim that is indubitable here is the agent-independent claim that there is cognitive activity present. The objection, as presented by Georg Lichtenberg, is that rather than supposing an entity that is thinking, Descartes should have said, thinking is occurring, that is, whatever the force of the cogito, Descartes draws too much from it, the existence of a thinking thing, the reference of the I, is more than the cogito can justify. Friedrich Nietzsche criticized the phrase in that it presupposes that there is an I, that there is such an activity as thinking, and that I know what thinking is. He suggested a more appropriate phrase would be it thinks wherein the it could be an impersonal subject as in the sentence it is raining. Topic. Kierkegaard's critique The Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard calls the phrase a tautology in his concluding unscientific postscript. He argues that the cogito already presupposes the existence of I, and therefore concluding with existence is logically trivial. Kierkegaard's argument can be made clearer if one extracts the premise, I think, into the premises, X thinks, and I am that X, where X is used as a placeholder in order to disambiguate the I. From the thinking thing, here, the cogito has already assumed the I's existence as that which thinks. For Kierkegaard, Descartes is merely developing the content of a concept, namely that the I, which already exists, thinks. As Kierkegaard argues, the proper logical flow of argument is that existence is already assumed or presupposed in order for thinking to occur, not that existence is concluded from that thinking. Topic. Williams' critique Bernard Williams claims that what we are dealing with when we talk of thought, or when we say, I am thinking, is something conceivable from a third-person perspective, namely objective thought events, 
in the former case, and an objective thinker in the latter. He argues, first, that it is impossible to make sense of there is thinking without relativizing it to something. However, this something cannot be Cartesian egos, because it is impossible to differentiate objectively between things just on the basis of the pure content of consciousness. The obvious problem is that, through introspection, or our experience of consciousness, we have no way of moving to conclude the existence of any third personal fact, to conceive of which would require something above and beyond just the purely subjective contents of the mind. Topic. Heidegger's critique As a critic of Cartesian subjectivity, Heidegger sought to ground human subjectivity in death as that certainty which individualizes and authenticates our being. As he wrote in 1927, This certainty, that I myself am in that I will die, is the basic certainty of Dasein itself. It is a genuine statement of Dasein, while cogito sum is only the semblance of such a statement. If such pointed formulations mean anything at all, then the appropriate statement pertaining to Dasein in its being would have to be some moribundus I am in dying, moribundus not as someone gravely ill or wounded, but insofar as I am, I am moribundus. The moribundus first gives the sum its sense. John McMurray's critique The Scottish philosopher John McMurray rejects the cogito outright in order to place action at the centre of a philosophical system he entitles the form of the personal. We must reject this, both as standpoint and as method. If this be philosophy, then philosophy is a bubble floating in an atmosphere of unreality. The reliance on thought creates an irreconcilable dualism between thought and action in which the unity of experience is lost, thus dissolving the integrity of ourselves, and destroying any connection with reality. In order to formulate a more adequate cogito, McMurray proposes the substitution of I do for I think, ultimately leading to a belief in God as an agent to whom all persons stand in relation. Topic. See also Floating man List of Latin phrases Solipsism Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Abraham, W. E. Disentangling the Cogito. Mind 83-329 Baird, Forrest E., Walter Kaufman 2008. From Plato to Derrida. Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, Pearson Prentice Hall. ISBN 0-13-158591-6, asterisk Asterisk Bufoy Bastic, Z introducing applicable knowledge as a challenge to the attainment of absolute knowledge, Sophia Journal of Philosophy, 8, 2005, pp 39-52. Descartes, R. Translated by John Cottingham, Meditations on First Philosophy, in the Philosophical Writings of Descartes Vol. 2 edited Cottingham, Stuthoff, and Murdoch, Cambridge University Press, 1984. ISBN 0-521-28808-8 Christofido, A. Self, Reason, and Freedom, A New Light on Descartes Metaphysics Ruffledge 2013 Hatfield, G. Routledge Philosophy Guidebook to Descartes and the Meditations Routledge, 2003. ISBN 0-415-11192-7 Kierkegaard, S. Concluding Unscientific Postscript, Princeton, 1985. ISBN 978-0-691-02081-5 Kierkegaard, S. Philosophical Fragments Princeton, 1985. ISBN 978-0-691-02036-5 Williams, B. Descartes, The Project of Pure Enquiry Penguin, 1978. OCLC 4025089 External links Zalta, Edward N. Ed. Descartes' Epistemology. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy.